guys yeah i just thought i'd do a video which i think is uh, quite important really because i've been through it with this little guy about um the cheek pouch infections and what to look out for um i'll be back in a second i'm just going to get him his baby food just so he's got something occupied while i'm talking now um as you all know Rosabi was ill recently and um I'm just going to give you some advice on what to do. Now, if your hamster is a comfort stuffer, and what I mean by that is they constantly leave food in the pouch to rot. Um, I've not come across it before. He's my very first hamster that's done it. I don't know if it's a dwarf thing. Maybe other people might be able to clarify that. But um, it's never happened to Missarians. But... He just constantly kept food in his pouch where it rotted. Now, if this happens, the chances are very high of your hamster getting um, a cheek pouch infection because uh, the pouches will get all bacteria in it. They'll get inflamed. They don't get swollen or anything like that. They just get inflamed and painful and smelly. <clears throat> and, um, and that's what happened to him. Got infected. Get They get infected. So what the signs to look out for is if they're a comfort stuffer, you must, even my vet said this, you must make sure that you've, you empty their pouches at least once a day, preferably twice, because uh, if you don't, the chances are even higher, they'll just get an infection. And it's not hard to do, it's just, you just... Hold them on the back, scruff them and just um, gently and just slowly t uh, touch the pouches till they want to put it out themselves and they'll just get the paw and empty and then they'll just spurt it out. Now, uh, if you are unlucky enough for your hamster to uh, still develop an infection, then uh, what will happen is when you, when you go near the pouches, they'll sort of squeak. They'll be very sore around the pouch. They won't want you to touch them around the pouch. The breath will be very, very smelly, more smelly than what it usually is. Because don't forget, it's not just food they're storing in the pouch. I mean, they'll, they'll store poop and everything. It's always disgusting, but that's an hamster thing. <laughs> so what you do is look out for the signs. Number one, they'll start to lose weight. Now, he lost his weight gradually over a three-month period. And like I said, the second, the pouches will be very sensitive, they'll be sore. They might be a bit puffy, depending on how severe it is. Then after that, just hold on a minute. There you go, little guy. Then after that, they'll just, you won't, you'll see they won't want to eat so much, which makes them lose weight more. And then they won't put stuffing the pouches as much so you'll notice they're not comfort stuffing as much and um, the best thing to do then at that stage is just take them to the vet the earlier the better take them to the vet and a quick dose of Bertrill is all it'll take usually and uh, it'll just clear it up this is uh, those carrot carrot carrots by the way it's looking a bit red on here because of the colouring but it's not I can show you it's orange <laughs> So, yeah, so they're the basic signs. Each hamster will be different, so they might not develop all them signs. They might develop different signs. So, but uh, I'm just telling you the, the signs that he developed. It got to the point where me and, me, me and the vet just didn't have a clue what was happening. We didn't know what it was. Like I said, it was diabetes, we thought it was diabetes and kidney infection oh, and all sorts of stuff thought he was um on his last legs and but they're the signs you're looking out just look out for him him or her just not looking so well not feeling so well not doing so much and then take them to the vet and they can put a little tiny light into the pouch and check and if it looks it looks like red or inflamed then the chances are it's infected. Now, his was looking, uh, his was very, very sore. And it is, he's had his bear troll. He doesn't put hardly anything in his pouch now. He just puts the stuff in his pouch and takes it to his bed, which is what they usually do. So I just don't think he feels the need now to keep it in his pouch all the time, unless he's learnt his lesson and thought, well, keeping this stuff in my pouch it makes me ill. 
you don't know, do you? <laughs> you don't know what hamsters think. But either, either way, since he's been on Bertrell, he's, uh, I've not had to deal with his pouches at all. And, uh, yeah, and his breath doesn't smell and it's just fabulous. So I just thought it'd be, because I know there's no, no videos out there on, on cheek pouch infections. And I thought it might come in handy for people who's got hamsters who might develop that one day or they might get an hamster further down the line who develops the, the symptoms. It, but all I'm saying is it's just really, really important that you don't just think, oh, well, they're old and the way it's going to come off them. And that that's what it is. It, 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 he's two. And I knew for a fact it, it wasn't really his age. I knew there was something wrong because his pouches were sore. So you just pop them off to the vet and don't let your vet persuade you to put the hamster down or anything like that. You know, just because if you you know your own hamster, so just judge judge your instincts. And if you know that it's an infection, why put them down when antibiotics will clear it? It's only if they're seriously ill, seriously poorly. Yeah, you know, really on the last legs, like if they've got cancer, then I could understand. Yeah, you'd want to do the best for them and put them to sleep. But don't let, because so many vets out there just think right, put it down, put the put the animal down without really giving them that, that little chance. Because if it's an infection, you could be robbing them of a, another few months or a year of life or in, in a cat and dog um, situation, another five or ten years' life. You don't know. So always, always use your instinct. So if, as long as you know they're not suffering, then just say, OK, just, can you not just give me some antibiotics? And then... Because I've literally thought my vet were going to put him down recently, but luckily I've got a fantastic vet. She no, she doesn't she won't even consider that unless it's the very very last stage. Obviously, unless it's really necessary. I mean, so she just give him Baytrol, and as you can see, he's all you know. Shut up, cat. He's um, not doing too bad for his age, so. Yeah, guys, so that's what you've got to do. So these are the stages. Pop them off to the vet and get them, get them to... If they don't, like I said, some vets are not very good. If they, if they're not interested, and then uh, just say, look, can you just please... I think it's a, pe um, a pouch problem. Could you please look inside the pouch? But a good vet will do that automatically. So once they look inside the pouch, then... Um, just ask them what, if they don't give it you. Just ask them for bear troll. Just to give them a little chance. And then if you see them getting better, then after a week, and uh, you should see an improvement. Now, during the treatment while they're on bear troll, this is very important. Don't just give them the muesli. Don't just say, yeah. Don't expect them to, because they're not going to feel, they're going to feel very poorly. It, it's a nasty infection, it really is. He was really lousy. He was really, really poorly. So he wanted to vet that on his own. So the, um, any good vet will tell you to, uh, to bulk up the weight and to keep the weight stable while they're ill, while they're poorly. Get baby food. Recommended. Just get baby food. Doesn't matter what it is, it can be, as long as it's safe ingredients, obviously. It could be the porridge type in a can which is more economical because it'll last longer. It can be jars, where if it's jars, obviously you've got to consider that you have to throw it away after 48 hours. But a jar, but a, a tub with a powdering, you don't have to. But you can mix and match. You can get them them uh, Ella's Kitchen peas, 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 and carrots, carrots, carrots. But again, they only last 48 hours in the fridge. But you get me meaning, you know, just get them whatever baby food you want. Try them on it. That should encourage them, encourage them to eat while they're poorly. And then what else I do, uh, which I'm still doing now, but before I start to that, while they're ill, you give them two portions a day. Shut up. You give them a little, little spoonful, and I don't mean a tablespoon, just a little, little spoon like this. Just a little teaspoon. And I'm getting carrot everywhere. <laughs> Each morning a baby food and then keep their own food down and, and then you'll probably find after a few days they'll start eating the muesli. Now with him, after about a week or two, 
he wasn't really he was much interested in having in wanting baby food at morning. So during the first week, two portions of baby food plus the normal muesli. And don't worry if they're not eating much of the muesli during this time while they're on antibiotics. Just slow down a minute. Yeah, so don't worry if they're not eating much muesli. The main thing is that they're eating something, at least if they're getting baby food, like my vet said. But you'll probably find after a few days of Batril or whatever antibiotic you get given, you'll probably find they will having a nibble during the night and uh, will eat it anyway. So that's the first week of um, why, he's on, why he or she is on antibiotics. Then after that, you continue then with just one portion of baby food. Just at night time. Just to keep that will just be to, unless they didn't lose a lot of weight. Where my was now, lost a lot of weight. Then obviously you won't need to because they'll just be eating the normal food. But I'm on about if it, they've really lost a lot of weight, and uh, then you will need to keep the baby food up for an extra couple of weeks. But I give. But I'm keeping this up now um, for a little while longer because he prefers that to normal treats. So I'll give it him as a little treat. But, uh, so yeah, after the first week, and once they finish the antibiotics, then just cut the food down to, to one, uh, baby food down to one portion at night, and then just leave the normal portion of muesli. Now what you can do is get the uh, the pellet parts out of the food. This is, my vet recommended this. Crush them finely, either in a blender or wrap them up in some um, tissue and bang them with a rolling pin till they're really fine. Then mix them with the baby food, uh, like I mix it with the baby porridge. So obviously you put hot water in the baby porridge, or milk or whatever, and then you put that part. You put the actual powdered pellets in with the porridge, mix it up, wait for it to cool, and then feed it to them. So then they're getting the baby food, but they're also getting the nutrients off the off the the muesli. So that's what I recommend. And then, and then it's entirely up to you when you decide to cut the baby food out or not. If they're old, then it might give them a bit more of a boost to keep the baby food going, but only one portion <laughs> at night. So yeah, I will do another video on how I do um, Rizabi's baby food when I, when I uh, crush these up. Now these are the size selected pellets, so one night I'll crush it up. I'll do it alternate. One night I'll crush it up with some, and put it in baby porridge. The next night, I'll just pop it in his little house, so at least he's chewing on it and then keeping his teeth down. So, it works either way, whatever way you want. So, I hope this has been helpful, and um, I just hope it never happens to any of your amies, but if it does, you you know now what to do and what signs to look out for. And uh, if I get any more info on cheek, um, cheek pouch infections, I will let you know. So... Hope this helps, guys. Bye.